This short video has been designed to form part of a YouTube playlist of women in British dance bands between the wars, specifically to highlight examples of groups that didn't record. So when we look beyond the recorded dance band repertoire, women's participation begins to come to light. We need to focus our attention instead on bands that played for dancing in the many venues that sprung up across the country to cater for the huge boom in social dancing. This is especially true when we look at places outside London and when we look to the bills of music hall and variety shows, which often began to feature dance bands as headline acts between the wars. Often all female dance bands achieved top billing as novelties. Women also built on the ways in into the popular music profession that had been open to them, such as music teaching and domestic singing and piano playing, but also through dancing. And they began to play in local and even nationally prominent dance bands. Hilda Ward led the most prominent all-female band in the mid-1920s, often billed as the Lady Syncopators. We know that she was active from the early 1920s, conducting for a variety artist named Sid Lynn, but ended up suing him for wrongful dismissal. This photo shows Ward's band at the Weidenhof Casino in Berlin in 1926. Hilda Ward had formed a band very rapidly in 1925 to play at Olympia and then for dancing at the Royal Opera House. This photo shows how the Opera House could be converted into a dance hall. This photo was in fact from around the time of World War II. She then went on to secure various bookings in variety shows. Hilda Ward and her band spent quite a lot of time in Europe in the 1920s, advertising their availability when they returned to the UK to pick up a new engagement. Just for context, the famous American band leader Paul Whiteman was in Europe also in 1926, and he was followed and emulated by British band leader Jack Hilton. So she was clearly working very much within those top echelons. In fact, she actually started a second band to deal with the demand for her group. This advert is typical of the sort of publicity that we see for Hilda Ward in the 1920s. We can see that the advert emphasises her great continental triumphs. Success in Europe was an important marker of quality for bands at this time. As I mentioned, unfortunately, this band never recorded, but we do have some idea from reviews about the sort of repertoire that they would have played. And one of the numbers that Hilda Ward played was Sahara. So we'll hear a snatch of this now in the hands of the Savoy Havana band, which gives us an idea about the sort of style that this band might have used. <laughs> The last appearance of Hilda Ward and her band in the stage was in 1928 when they were due to play at the Leighton Stone Rialto. This was definitely a step down from their heady days at the London Coliseum. 
Here's an extract from a review of Hilda Ward's Lady Syncopators from 1925. And you can see that this very much emphasises their appearance, their pink tailcoats and pantaloons, high gauze collars and silver wigs, and their pretty faces and handsome figures are well set off. It mentions Hilda Ward specifically as being one of three saxophones and also gives us a sense of the band with trombone, clarinet, banjo, trap drummer, um, which is basically a drum kit player and two pianists. And that also gives us an idea of the popular repertoire of the day that they were including in their show. Further examples of all female interwar dance bands can be seen when we look at the career of Gwen Rogers and her sisters, Edna and Agnes. Gwen fronted two groups that were led musically by Edna and Agnes, the Romney Players and the Musical Dolls. Like Hilda Ward, they also played at the Royal Opera House and we, we know that the Romney Players spent some time in the spa town of Buxton. We also know that these groups were active from the mid-1920s through to at least 1928. best known of the Rogers sisters bands was undoubtedly the musical dolls which you can see here in the picture. This stylized presentation was maintained very consistently and undoubtedly contributed to their high profile popularity and success. They seem to have produced little pin badges at this time as well as you can see there in the picture this one was sold recently on eBay. Edna Rogers' husband was Leighton Lucas, a composer and arranger. It was reported that he arranged this song, When I Met Sally, for Edna and the band to play, but that the arrangement was recorded not by them, but by Jack Hilton. Let's hear a section from that now. <laughs> The bands of Hilda Ward and the Rogers sisters were undoubtedly exceptional examples of interwar female dance bands. Although underrepresentation and prejudice were rarely far away, the documentary evidence we have suggests that women were more deeply embedded in British interwar popular music than the standard histories might suggest. It's important that we discover and understand the important contributions of women to the history of popular music and jazz in this country. <laughs>